Hey guys, Tony DeNaro here. It is Friday, time for a feel good video for each and every one of you. We're gonna be talking about something a little bit different today, not related to a certain company, but the movie industry as a whole. I'm gonna to touch on Apple and Amazon, each committing a billion dollars to theatrical releases and going over a recent publication from the Cinema Foundation and statistics on the movie industry as a whole, where it's been, where it's going, let's get right into it. It is no secret that the movie industry took a hit in 2020 with the pandemic and everybody thought theaters were done and streaming was the way to go. Well, we have seen the tables turn in the last three years. Domestic box office dropped from the 11 to $12 billion range in 2019, all the way down to 2 billion when everything shut down. And we have been climbing out of that hole. 2022, we were back up to seven and a half billion. 2023, we're expected to reach probably around 9 billion. And hopefully in 2024, we will be back to that 11 to $12 billion number and then grow the industry from there. The industry, being movies and streaming has learned that streaming is not really the way that people want to go see movies. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but let's first talk about Apple and Amazon. We got this press release back in November of 2022, Amazon admitting that they need to be investing money in theatrical releases. We're going to talk about that data and why they are making this decision in just a second. I'm not gonna read the whole article to you. I'll put the link in the video description if you haven't seen it yet. The headline says Amazon plans to spend $1 billion annually producing theatrical films, and they are looking for an output of 12 to 15 movies a year. We have this new press release from Apple saying essentially the same thing. Apple also being a streaming company. Apple is also going to be spending a billion dollars a year on theatrical releases. This is brand new news just released March 23rd, 2023. The hope that these companies have is that they can spend money, do theatrical releases, and then also with that press, with that attention, lure people also over to their streaming services. But now nobody can deny that theatrical releases are the way to generate money in this industry. Let's look at the report, the data, and the statistics that were just released by the Cinema Foundation. The Cinema Foundation is part of NATO, no, not that NATO, the National Association of Theater Owners. And on NATO's board are some names you might recognize here. I'm just gonna read out a couple of them. Adam Aaron, the CEO of AMC Entertainment. Wanda Gearhart fearing she's the Chief Marketing Officer for Cinemark. Rolando Rodriguez, the CEO of Marcus Theaters Corporation, also a big chain here domestically. And we have some folks from Cineworld, Main Street Theaters, Harkins Theaters, and others. NATO is the largest film exhibition trade organization in the world, representing 35,000 screens in all 50 states in the U.S as well as 101 foreign countries. Besides this great presentation and data that I'm gonna go through very quickly with you, NATO is also working to represent the industry both with federal legislation, as well as working with movie distributors on all areas of mutual concern. There are 58 slides in this presentation. No, don't worry, I'm not going to read through all of them with you. I'm only gonna talk about the things that I found exciting or interesting. If you wanna read all of it, I'll put the link in the video description. But this very first page, this just jump out and spoke to me. When the movies are there, the audiences are there. I could not have said it better myself, right? When the movies are there, the audiences are there. We saw that with so many great movies last year and already into 2023. And I have such good expectations going forward for the industry in 2024 and beyond. What we're gonna see on the data in the next couple slides is that the data clearly demonstrates that consumers prefer titles with exclusive theatrical releases. And although there's been a big debate about theatrical release versus streaming. It says here that consumers are more likely to budget their time and money to titles that debuted first exclusively in theaters. Hello, Amazon and Apple. They already got the message. We're going to see in the data that on a film by film level, when we're looking at what any one particular film is bringing in, we have already returned to 2019 pre-pandemic 
box office revenue levels. The only limitation right now is the number of wide releases that are being put out by the studios, and that is being fixed. As we ease into 2023, the number of wide releases from the studios is already 40% higher than 2022, and soon we will be approaching that level where we were back in 2019. For you data scientists and number lovers, a very quick overview of the industry numbers. Total movie screens worldwide up 5.8%. 212,590 total movie screens in the United States down 5% to 39,007. The 3D share of North American box office is now at 6.05%. And the PLF screens or the premium large format screens in the North American box office is now standing at 14% at the end of 2022. What are movie theater owners planning to do to improve the experience for consumers? Here we have some numbers for movie theater owners in North America. Very quickly, 39% plan on adding more premium large format screens over the next three years. 54% plan on upgrading the sound systems in some of their auditoriums over the next three years. 53% plan on upgrading projectors in some of their auditoriums over the next three years. 42% plan on adding recliner seating to some of their auditoriums over the next three years. And 37% plan on adding alcohol service to some of their theaters over the next three years. You knew I was gonna like that one, didn't you? An interesting data point for those of you supporting the movie industry, you are saving and supporting jobs. There are 155,000 people employed in the industry just in the United States alone. A quick chart on North American box office numbers. We already talked about this, $7.53 billion in 2022, headed to $9 billion in 2023. This page I found interesting, the average ticket price. Yes, it has gone up. It always seems like it's really expensive, right? $10.53 in 2022 was the average ticket price. But what I never thought about was what is that in inflation adjusted dollars? It's actually cheaper to go to the movies now on an inflation adjusted basis than it was in 1971 when tickets only cost $1.65 each. Now we come back to this theme of when the movies are there, the audience is there. What does that mean? Let's look at these three charts right here. Movies released on 2000 plus screens in 2019 was 112. In 2022, it was only 71. We are waiting for the movie studios to increase these wide releases and that is coming. Box office from these movies in 2019 was 10.10 .10 billion in 2022 six and a half billion average per title though when the movies are there the audience is there average per title in 2019 90.25 million in 2022 91.7 million in 2019 there were 10 movies that grossed more than 300 million dollars domestically each in 2022 even with that much lower wide release schedule there were eight movies that grossed more than 300 million dollars each people want to see these movies if hollywood Hollywood puts the right ones out. What can we expect from Hollywood? We had 71 wide releases in 2022. That is projected to increase 50% for 2023 with a total of 107 wide releases currently planned for 2023. Who are the studios putting these movies out? We got Disney, Lionsgate, Paramount, Sony, Universal, and Warner Brothers with the bulk in 2023 coming from Sony, Universal, and Disney. Where can you see a movie? Well, if you want to know the top 50 domestic exhibitors, it is in this presentation. We're not gonna go through all of those. AMC Entertainment is number one though, domestically. In 2022, they had 7,712 screens with 591 locations. Regal and Cinemark come in at number two and three. Cineplex and Marcus Theaters, bringing up the number four and number five spots. There's a bunch of data and statistics in this presentation about National Cinema Day. That was brought to you by this organization, the Cinema Foundation and NATO. Remember back in September of 2022, where you could go see any movie, any time of day, any format for just $3 each? 
Thank you, NATO and Cinema Foundation. The industry as a whole widely viewed this National Cinema Day as a huge success, over 100% day over day uptick from the day before, and over a 8% week for week uptick from the Saturday before. When your average ticket price is $10.70 and you drop it all the way down to $3 and then you see box office revenue numbers jumping like this, even though the price has been reduced by two thirds, the scale of how huge this one day was starts to sink in. 59% of people who attended a movie on September National Cinema Day say they have now been going to movies more often. I think it's also interesting to note that National Cinema Day is not just relegated to the United States. Many other countries have been experimenting with this. France now has a four-day National Cinema Week. It has been so successful. Would not be surprised to see the National Cinema Day in the United States, Canada, and other countries in Europe expand to more than one day. You can see here on the bar chart, for example, in Europe, the pink being the National Cinema Day or week, how much of an increase they got versus the red the week prior. These are huge numbers. This is a widely popular event. And when we look at the UK and Ireland, we see the exact same thing. Massive impact from National Cinema Day. Getting back to those big movies, why are they so important? Well, loyalty programs like AMC's A-List and Stubbs program are important revenue generators and ways to keep the audience engaged and coming back. And these big movies drive loyalty memberships and people signing up for them. A 78% increase in loyalty memberships reported in the United States in 2022. And you can see right here in the middle of this screen how big of an impact a movie like Top Gun has in driving those loyalty memberships. Where are people buying their tickets? You know, you can buy them in person at the theater. You can buy them now on apps. And we have third-party services like Fandango, and MoviePass. There are three colors on this chart. I'm only going to focus on the dark green and the light green, the two close to the top of each chart. The third one at the bottom of each chart is third parties like Fandango and MoviePass. These third-party services are essentially irrelevant because they are such a small driver of where people buy tickets. What I want to point out in the top left and the top right is that in the younger age brackets, we are seeing an increase in number of people purchasing their movies through an app. In the bottom left, you can see in the 55 plus bracket that that group has not yet embraced purchasing their tickets on an app, and most of them are purchasing in person at the theater. We are going to close out and wrap up by talking about the dynamic between theatrical releases and streaming, and why companies like Amazon and Apple have decided it's worth investing a billion dollars each in theatrical releases. Almost without exception for the top streaming services, they have realized that their top five grossing movies, the most movies that people watch, came from a theatrical release. In a survey, 50% of respondents said that they were more likely to watch something on streaming if they knew it had been released in a theater. This adds credibility to the streamed movie. These streaming services realize that they need to get these movies in theaters first to drive streaming revenues later. The other thing that these streaming services are struggling with is losing revenue, losing sales to piracy. Streaming services are taking steps to address piracy, but you can see from this chart, especially in the first 90 days, they are losing massive amounts of viewers to pirated views. And the other thing that these streaming services have learned is that the money comes from theatrical releases. There have not been any $1 billion streaming service movies. Without a billion dollar movie showing in the theaters, there's no way you can support high dollar production budgets, $200 million production budgets on streaming. You have to go into movies and then show it in the streaming after that. The very last slide that we are going to go over, and I also want to hear from you down in the comments, which genres do you want to see more of in theaters? Comedies came in at number one. What audiences want to see more of in 2023 and going forward is comedy, followed by action thrillers, horror, drama, and romance. Let me know what you want to see more of in Hollywood. I hope you're listening. Ladies and gentlemen, if you made it to the very end, you are the real OGs. You are the real cinema lovers, just like myself. 
and I appreciate each and every one of you. If you learned something new, if you got value out of this video, hit the like button, share it on social media. Don't forget to buy and hold the subscribe button if this is your first time here. I am Tony DeNaro, and I will see you on the next video.